Hello and welcome to this packed publishing course. In this section, we will do a brief introduction to vSphere 6.5. We will provide a brief introduction to the course content. And of course, we will have a, a separate video, which will be an introduction to the ESXi 6.5 command line interface, which as an advanced professional, you will need to be very competent at, and we will work our way through it. And in each and every section in this course, there will be plenty of command line activity that is pertinent for that topic. So let's talk about the course content. So in terms of the audience for this course, this is an advanced course. And the expectation is that the folks that are doing this course have at least a vSphere foundations level of knowledge or equivalent experience. So we are not going to be talking about basic VMware concepts such as the VMFS, or the hypervisor type ones and so on. So even basic installation of an ESXi hypervisor is uh, assumed. A second important point to understand is that vSphere 6.5 is a minor or a dot release upgrade, but it is still version 6.x. So when vSphere was released, it was version 6.0. There were some updates came up to vSphere 6.0 update 2 and then vSphere 6.5 was released in late October of 2016. But it does not mean that vSphere 6.5 changes everything in vSphere 6. There are advanced capabilities and new capabilities that have been added to vSphere 6.5. There have been some under the cover changes, especially in storage that have been made. There is a new VMFS version 6 file system as an example and there has been a lot of tuning that has been done as well. But it doesn't mean that if you're running a vSphere 6.5 environment that any knowledge of vSphere 6.0 is wasted. And the reason for it is very simple. After all, this is still vSphere version 6. So in this course, we will cover the vSphere 6.5 major changes that are specific only to vSphere 6.5. So we are going to cover upgrades from vSphere version 6.0 to vSphere 6.5. We will cover the advanced ways of doing that. We also covering the vCenter server appliance version 6.5 that has some excellent capabilities, including new ones that have been integrated into it, such as the update manager. We will cover that in great detail. Also, we will look at the vCenter server appliance version 6.5's capability being fault tolerant, or the right word actually is high availability because now there's a way of which is integral to the vCenter server appliance where high availability for the environment is provided, which is very different from before. So again, there are extensive labs for this. I also include material that is common to vSphere 6.0 through vSphere 6.5, simply because as I've said before, just because there is vSphere 6.5 doesn't mean that everything has changed or that anything that was valid for 6.0 is not valid. In fact, vSphere 6.5 being a minor or dot release upgrade basically builds on the major changes that came in version 6 that were initially released in version 6.0. Now a word about the actual topics in this course. So this course is focused on practical data center requirements. What that means is this. Based on my experience, in working in the data center, both on the networking side, as well as on the virtualization side, as well as in managing uh, data centers, I realized that there are certain aspects that are not really covered very well in the training that is normally provided. So for example, backup and recovery and, and uh, restore of vSphere deployments is a very, very important subject. It is not very flashy, but it requires an attention to detail. And when things go bad, it is the only way to be able to come back online as fast as is humanly possible, only if one has paid attention to it ahead of time. So as an example, the section on backup and recovery of vSphere deployments is very extensive and I've covered ground using labs that is very rarely covered, if ever. So because of this focus on practical data center requirements, this course is essentially lab-based. So 90% of this course content is lab-based. In fact, the most PowerPoints that you'll probably see in any given section 
is in this introductory video. So having said that 90 plus percent of course content is lab based and that practical data center focused topics have been selected, I have, as I explained earlier, provided a detailed exploration of key data center operations topics. And we are going to use version 6.5 and the compatible version 6.0 content because after all, this is version 6.x. And although version 6.5 is covered, as we said before, version 6.5, while it adds on new capabilities, it doesn't mean that the previous capabilities are not there and even that has to be covered, especially from a viewpoint of the practicality of using this material in a real live operational data center. In this video, we will cover briefly the features of vSphere 6.5. The idea is not to go into too much detail because things change very rapidly and because of that, the best way of always being up to date and getting accurate information about vSphere is always to go to the VMware documentation. So we will cover these features, but we will cover them very, very briefly so that we can jump into the lab in the next video. In this video, we will take a look at the hypervisor ESXi 6.5 features, the new advanced features in vCenter 6.5, the storage features. Some of them are very interesting ones, uh, such as virtual machine encryption, some neat networking features. SMP fault tolerance is not much changed from before. Improvements in the vSphere update manager and some vSphere support tools such as Log Insight and Operations Manager. Now, before we jump into each one of these topics, I just want to say that it is really important to get the most recent information about any one of these features. It's imperative that you go to the VMware support documentation. In this course, I am going to just give you a very brief overview. I'm not going to go into the details of many of these things. We're going to look at all of these in the lab and we are going to make sure that we look at it from a practical perspective. Some of these improvements are under the covers. Some of these improvements are essential for corner cases or very infrequently used for our course the topics that I've selected in each and every one of these are the ones that are really important from a practical data center operations perspective. So the hypervisor ESXi 6.5, it's a type one hypervisor as we know, small footprint of 130 megabytes uh, has not changed uh, from before. The number of virtual CPUs per host is 4096. From ESXi 6.0, the amount of RAM per host has increased from six terabytes to 12 terabytes. Everything else basically is the same with the number of CPUs, virtual CPUs per core being 32 and the number of logical CPUs with hyperthreading being 320. I will not spend too much time on these. Configuration maximums are available in the documentation. Moving to vCenter 6.5, I think the biggest set of improvements in vSphere 6.5 have to do with vCenter 6.5. Now, apart from the ones that I have indicated here, these are the ones that come to mind. There are some others as well, but from a data center perspective, from a virtual data center design perspective, the very first one, which is integrated high availability mechanism for vCenter is something that we've been waiting for for a very, very long time. There were different approaches to doing it, but now there is an integrated mechanism available that we will explore in depth in the section that deals with availability in a vSphere environment. Another key feature is the integrated update manager in the vCenter server appliance. Earlier, this was available only in the Windows environment. There is enhanced host profile management in the new vCenter. Very, very advanced and uh, great capabilities for picking up uh, configurations from different host profiles and creating new host profiles. The entire architecture of vCenter was changed with an integrated or an external platform services controller that provides standard services such as a certificate authority so that uh, you don't have this uh, issue anymore of self-signed certificates. There is a certificate authority built in into the platform services controller that signs the certificates at the top level. Now, of course, you can extend it out and go to a, a third party certificate authority as well. But the fact of the matter is that all of the internal uh, traffic is now encrypted using this capability, which is based on an integrated 
CA uh, that is provided within vCenter version 6 and vCenter version 6.5 and later in the course we go into great detail about this as well. There is a brand new version 6 point installer which includes the ability to migrate from a Windows vCenter if you have that running. It works very well. I have tried it out in labs and uh, again in our lab for this course I use the new version 6.5 installer. Now those of you that have had experience with the version 6.0 installer know that it could be a little bit uh, tricky with the plugin and everything else like that. No such issue here. Very very straightforward. And the other important thing is that you can run this installer not just on a Windows laptop but you can use it in a Linux environment or in a Macintosh environment as well. And in the vCenter 6.5 there have been some user interface changes from version 6.0 and during the course you will see that I occasionally use vCenter 6.0 because in some labs it doesn't really matter whether it's vCenter 6.5 or 6.0. You may notice some minor interface changes but again this is an advanced course so it's uh, pretty easy to pick up uh, exactly what's going on so I'm sure there won't be any confusion because of that. Some interesting storage features in uh, 6.x and 6.5 so with 6.5 there's a new VMFS 6 file system. You cannot migrate a VMFS 5 file system to VMFS 6. You have to basically do a storage vMotion over to a new newly created VMFS 6 file system. It's uh, very fast and the file system is also created very very quickly. Also it allows the use of the full use of advanced format drives. So drives nowadays have uh, 4K physical sectors rather than the original 512 bytes that dates back from about 30 years ago. vSAN, there's a all SSD uh, vSAN as well and there's a new version of vSAN uh, 6.5. In this course we won't be dealing with it too much because again that's enough material for a completely separate course. Virtual volumes are another level of uh, storage uh, virtualization that uh, basically abstracts away the underlying platform that supports uh, your uh, storage. Another great move works with third party drivers basically so you need to have some high end storage uh, to be able to use virtual volumes. But again from a production perspective uh, it's something that you should definitely consider. Enough material in here again for a separate course so we will just mention this and uh, uh, will not be taking this any further in this course. Let's talk about fiber channel FCOE, iSCSI and Infinity and InfiniBand. These have all been supported for a very very long time. FCOE is becoming quite uh, popular now but iSCSI is making a comeback as well especially with the new SSD based storage devices where iSCSI is readily available and it's very fast very effective and again you don't have to have a separate storage network you can just have your ethernet network and be done with it. And of course with version 6.5 there is iSCSI static routing support so you don't have to have your iSCSI initiator and your iSCSI targets in the same subnet. You can have them in different subnets and provide a static route basically to be able to route it across to the other subnet. So nice uh, support there. Everything is moving in the VMware environment to being policy based and so this is an excellent excellent enhancement. Virtual machine encryption is now policy based. You define a policy and then depending on what policy you assign to your virtual machine the encryption will take place. This is done in the hypervisor. There is also encrypted vMotion which uses basically keys and uh, encryption mechanism which are good for one time vMotion uh, only. So very very secure over the transport network. Uh, storage IO control also now is policy based. Very nice way to control storage IO control because now you can be very granular, very very fine grained with storage IO uh, control and obviously much easier to manage from a policy based process. NFS3 and F NFS4 support of course has been there earlier with the earlier versions of vSphere version 6. I mentioned iSCSI static routing support already and there have been some enhancements in the pluggable storage architecture. The native multi-pathing plugin, the SATP, the uh, path selection plugin and so on. So I know I'm moving very rapidly through this. The point here again is that each one of these is probably material for one or two hour course in themselves. So I would uh, recommend that you look at the VMware uh, documentation if you're looking at some of these things in uh, detail. We will look at, at storage features, advanced storage in great detail as well. Networking features, of course the vSphere distributed switch version 6 came out with the vSphere 6. Multiple link aggregation groups are now possible and a new version of network control version 3. We are going to do this in the lab later on as well. 
some details about enhanced multicast support because the earlier virtual switch was not very smart about it. So now there's enhanced multicast support. Very important because vSAN uses multicasting as well and NSX in one mode of operation also uses multicast. So it's, it's uh, good to be able to have effective multicasting within the virtual switch. Network protocol profiles, very, very useful. Again, this is uh, the uh, policy-based mechanism. You can define profiles and then basically attach them and then this way you get consistency. Very similar to the way it's done in Cisco Nexus. For example, you can assign port profiles. Marking and tagging is a feature that has been there from before but is very, very important because it is important to make sure that the amount of priority you give to a packet within the virtual environment is actually carried across into the physical environment and in the networking videos as well as in the optimizing replication video I believe I deal with this in great depth. Very important. This is something from a data center perspective is often the cause of poor performance. And something absolutely wonderful as far as I'm concerned is dedicated gateways for VM kernel adapters. So no longer are you restricted to having single gateways for multiple services. You can have default gateways for different services and you just plug them into different VM kernel adapters. So much cleaner, especially with iSCSI being used so much and NFS as well. Having this capability is very, very useful. Moving very quickly on to SMP fault tolerance. The biggest aspect in version 6.5 was there was some enhanced DRS integration, but even in version 6.0, support for four CPUs, 64 gigabytes of RAM per FTVM. A new technology called fast checkpointing is used. New capability in version 6.5 is that multiple port groups can be assigned now for the FT traffic, similar to multi-NIC vMotion. Of course, remember this is bandwidth and it can only be be used across uh, multiple FT instances because you go through one adapter, essentially that's the bandwidth that you get for your uh, traffic. VADP backups are supported, a very, very nice capability. We have a lot of information and labs for you in this course on VADP on the data protection appliance, uses VADP. And of course, even disk formats that are thin provisioned are now supported with uh, SMP fault tolerance. Update manager is now available in the virtual in the vCenter server plans 6.5. Of course, it's also based on Windows-based vCenter and we have labs galore for this going forward. It automates patch and version management centrally as uh, before. Of course, you can upgrade and patch ESXi hosts as before. And uh, VM hardware tools and appliances, nothing new here. And of course, uh, there is an additional capability which is called the Update Manager Download Service that allows you to basically uh, proxy the downloads so that uh, multiple instances of uh, Update Manager can uh, access the downloads for the patches and everything else like that. A nice capability. But its integration into the vCenter Server Appliance 6.5 is tremendous. And uh, we explored it in great depth in labs in this course. vSphere support tools, as the environment becomes sophisticated and there are more and more capabilities, the amount of information one needs to manage is, is, has risen exponentially. So having a policy-based uh, data center and a policy-based environment such as VMware provides almost everywhere is tremendously useful. It's the only way to manage an environment and uh, especially when you uh, automate it uh, with uh, capabilities such as uh, vRealize uh, automation or with uh, vCloud Director, profile-based uh, capabilities really save the day. So vRealize Operations Manager has new dashboards, vRealize Login Site for vCenter and of course uh, there is enhanced audit quality uh, logging now available in the vSphere 6.5 uh, environment as well. So with this very brief walkthrough, the various features available in version 6.5 and a little bit of contrast with what was available in 6.0, I would again reiterate that it is uh, very important for you to go to the VMware documentation and uh, review the VMware documentation for details of these uh, topics. In this uh, course, we are very much uh, focused on labs, so you will see all this in operation. And with that, in the next video, we will begin our introduction to ESXi command line interface. I look forward to seeing you there.